Hey, Exotic Gaming here, back with a video covering some mods for Seven Days to Die. Now, most of these mods will be quality of life additions to the game, but some of them at the end will be more fun and creative type variants. Nexus mods can be used to find most of these, but I will link the rest below. First up is a mod called HUD+. Plus. This mod changes the whole UI of the game that you're going to see. And the best features I think that it gives is the bottom left UI change, which shows hunger bars and water bars, along with elevation, temperature, and etc. It keeps the UI still being minimalistic while also showing more, especially at the top of the screen where it's moved the time and day marker higher up creating more of a field of view. Check it out if you don't want to spend so much time in your character panel looking at temperature and etc stats. The wireless power box mod allows you to get rid of those annoying wires that are hanging around in the original game. By connecting a generator to this power box, you can connect your electronics to this with no wires being hanging. This is a huge quality of life improvement for creative base building where you don't want to have to worry about the wires being all over. As you can see, it works pretty well even at long ranges if we connect it here and you don't see those wires everywhere. You do still, however, need to connect it to the generator like normal and then connect the electronics to that power box. It still needs fuel, still needs engine, but it's a very cosmetic change to the game, so check it out. The flexible skill progression mod for the game is very unique in the fact that it changes leveling up entirely. Skills are now based on your character's level, not what attribute you're in. So if you want to level up a child skill that normally would require, let's say, a lot of strength or perception, now it's based on the character's level. By looking at Deadeye here, we can see the level 2 Rifleman requires character level 10. And this is way different than the old game where it required a certain level of perception. This can change the whole way you level up your character in the game. If we look, go down the list here, level 20, level 30, level 40 for level 5 of the skill that you're wanting to level up into. This is true for all the skills in the game. This mod kind of prevents the whole being shoehorned into one category like strength, if you like mining for instance, and lets you broaden your character's leveling up to like different character builds entirely. 12 slot crafting queue mod is one of my favorite when it comes to building big bases or anything like that where I want to do a lot of construction while also building my base up. This mod takes away the 4 limit on the crafting queue and changes it to 12 as the title suggests. It's also very handy for breaking down items while scavenging around the world. Doorknobs, trophies, brass radiators all take up a lot of inventory space and breaking them down does waste a little bit of resources, but it clears up a lot of inventory space that could be slowing you down in combat. As you're fortifying your base, building up walls, all of this stuff can be constructing, so you save a lot of time at night for maybe mining or doing more excavation work. This increased zombie spawning mod has three versions, times two, times three, and times four. I would highly recommend that you experiment with what you like because most people who start off with times four will regret it if they aren't used to a lot of zombies out in the wilderness. Now this mod doesn't affect zombies and POIs or any predetermined locations like that. It simply affects the amount of randomly spawning zombies in the wilds. If you want some more excitement in your general playthroughs of the game, in the early game especially when you're out in the wilds, check out this mod. And I would recommend starting off with times 3 Now here's a very quality of life mod, Stop Fuel Waste. This mod makes fireplaces, forges turn off after they're done crafting or breaking down whatever research you put into them. This will save you tons of fuel long term in the game. So you could load up your items with 4,000 wood, for instance, and then let it just turn off when it's done using it. And you can just never have to replace it, more than likely. So you could line up, let's say, a bunch of meat to cook, and then after it's done cooking, it'll turn off, just like this campfire did. Pretty handy if you think of the long-term implications this could have for forging. The Stainless Steel again mod. This adds an item to the game called Stainless Steel, and it's a block with 30,000 HP. Kind of looks like wet concrete, but it's an upgraded block from steel. You use steel polish, as you just saw, to upgrade it from this steel variant. If you want to make any super huge structures that have high structural integrity, I would recommend using this. It only takes oil and ala cream, so it shouldn't be too hard to farm up in-game, especially given how long it takes to get steel currently. 
it's just like any other upgrading path where you just continue to upgrade until you get to steel and it takes one hit after you have the steel polish here and boom there you go 30,000 hp it kind of allows you to have not so huge bases late game if you just want like a small little fort or end game this could work pretty well now onto some more fun and creative mods for the game Telric sleeping mod this allows you to recover health and speed up time by sleeping on a bedroll now the sleeping is like crouching so all you have to do is crouch on it but it speeds up time as time goes on within the game world, you build up a stat called Sleepiness. It doesn't work on Horde Knight, but it does speed up time, and the easy version of the mod allows you to be healed while doing it. Next, we have Elemental Blocks. This is a huge mod that adds a lot of blocks to the game and some runes that can be really cosmetic changes to how you play. We have blood, lava, ice, and shocking. This is the blood block, which has a nice little flowing effect to it. And the next up, we have the lava block, which has kind of the same look, but more orangish red. You could really use these to make like a fantasy type of base look. They also have an effect if you stand on them, which I'll show you after place some of these down. I This is my least favorite one. It kind of looks like worms swimming in water, but it shocks you, as you can see here. And it shocks zombies too, so you can create this and really have a nice little uh, party with zombies walking all over it. The lava one obviously catches you on fire. And the ice one's my personal favorite look-wise and effect-wise. Because if you walk on this, you have a 30% chance to slip and go into a ragdoll yeah, just like so. And the zombies will also have the same chance, which is hilarious. The mod also comes with some nice runes that you can place for cosmetic purposes. You could really create some nice looking fantasy stuff with these and they just look so creepy, especially like this fire one. Looks like some avatar shit that someone came up with, especially the middle symbol. It actually kind of looks like some full metal alchemist type alchemy thing someone came up with these are just some really cool blocks you could do a lot with it's a flamethrower do i really need to say much else it looks awesome look at this it's a gas can below it, it looks like a machine gun with the fire coming out of the muzzle there's four colors black purple blue and green you just put them in like mods and then it comes out spewing that color the reloading animation is a little bit unique, but it looks sick. It kind of looks like some magic from another world or something like that. This looks like some anime type magic. And this one looks like the Green Goblin. I swear, the shit that comes out of him. Ooh, it looks even better at night. Like, oh my God. Hellwork did a great job on the particle effects on this. Now, make sure when you're attacking zombies that you have gas in it. I made the mistake of not, and it didn't work. But it applies a debuff on zombies, like the fire debuff, and that's how it damages them. It's not straight up damage, so it's not the best at like mass killing. It's more so, I'm guessing, for just cosmetic look. But it, it does eventually kill them. Hey, come on. That, you tell me that doesn't look awesome. Now those are all some mods that I'll link below and they're really simple and like more quality of life than anything. I tried to limit it to that scope. But if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and liking the video. It really does help me out. We're almost at 2K now and I'll go on to showing you an easy way to install these mods. First, just go into your seven days to die folder and you'll see I have a mod folder here with all the mods I just showed you inside of it. You want to create a folder right here and name it mods just in the general seven days to die folder. I already have it, so I'm not going to, but this is what it'll look like. And you'll just insert the mods that you download into this. Now they'll come in, they'll look like this. They won't be zipped. You want to make sure that you move the unzipped folder into, into the mod folder you just made. Don't open it and move everything inside of it. Move the whole folder itself that just that isn't zipped. And then once you have that done, you should be able to move it in, load up the game, make sure you aren't running the game when you install it and it should work. 
Let me know if you have any problems in the comments and thanks for watching.